I greet you in the mighty name of Jesus. It is me again, Apostle Shirley from El Shaddai Kingdom Purpose Ministries. I welcome you um, as I take this time to share with you in the Word of God. Um, I do believe that all of us, we, we need encouragement, we need motivation, most especially with everything that is going on at the moment. We need to hear a word that is going to uplift us and drive us in the right direction to guide us to achieve the things that we are supposed to achieve while we are on this earth. Um, as I meet with you this moment, I just want to encourage you that you are somebody that God has selected, God has chosen, and God wants you to know that you have a future and that future is very bright. And that future, it, it is filled with the goodness of God, it is filled with His love and His mercy and His grace. But the enemy does not want you to believe that. He wants you to believe something else totally different, something that's going to bring you down, drag you down and make you feel discouraged and oppose you and challenge you and make you not to be able to reach your destination successfully. So this moment as I share with you, I would like to share in the word of God where God created Adam and Eve. When he created them, God wanted to have a union. He wanted to have companionship with Adam and Eve. He wanted to share a relationship that was close, personal, and very deep. He created them and did not give them clothing. This reason being God to him, Adam and Eve were spirit beings with souls living in a body. What was important was for them to look after their spiritual aspect. That is why God would meet with them and even Adam and Eve, they did not have a problem with the fact that they were naked. They were comfortable with that. Why? Because their spiritual need was taken care of. You see, when your spiritual need is taken care of, you don't care. It doesn't matter what you don't have in the physical. Today we live our lives chasing after things to take care of our natural needs, our physical needs. And we, we tend to neglect our spiritual need. And that is where our greatest problem is. That is where our greatest downfall is. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 from verse 8, the Bible says then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day and they hid from the Lord among the trees of the garden but the Lord called out where are you Adam answered I heard you in the garden and I was afraid because I was naked so I hid and God responded by saying who told you that you are naked have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? Today, the same thing. God is looking for each and every one of us to have a relationship. A relationship of love, of intimacy and affection. God is looking to give you what you are worth. God is looking for you and me that we may encounter and experience something that we we cannot even express. It can only be expressed by going through it or encountering it. God wants to give you and me something the world cannot offer us. Something that money can never offer us. We all need money. No doubt about that. We all desire good lives, good lifestyles. We can't deny that. That's something that we all need. But what really matters is that we first take care of what really is important for our lives. And what is important is to have a relationship with God. Everything that we desire in life, it is in God and it flows from God. Without that relationship with God, we can achieve many things. We can attain everything. We can have everything that this world or this life can offer. 
But if we don't have a relationship with God, we are not going to be satisfied by whatever we receive. So now God says to Adam and Eve, where are you? He's looking for them. He was not looking for them for any other reason. He just wanted to see them just the way God would love to see you and me today. And Adam answered, I heard you and I hid because I'm not comfortable. I'm naked. And God said, who told you that you are naked? The enemy wants you and me to be filled with thoughts of un unworthiness. Many people today are struggling with thoughts of suicide. Some people take, take their lives. Some people end their lives prematurely. Why? Because they come to a place where they are totally dissatisfied with their lives and they don't see how they are going to find satisfaction. God says to Adam, who told you that you were naked? There are thoughts of hopelessness, thoughts of discouragement. Maybe you have failed at something. You have tried it so many times and you have failed. Don't stop. Don't give up. Don't walk away from something that could make you become the greatest person that will leave a legacy that will bring glory to God. I encourage you and I motivate you right now that God in the relationship that you, you can have with God, a relationship of, that is very close and very deep, from that relationship flows everything that you are supposed to be. The enemy has told you that you cannot achieve this, you cannot be this, you cannot be that. That is his opinion. Get out of, of working and living your life according to the opinion of the enemy. God has already given you his opinion. To God, Adam and Eve were not naked. That was God's opinion. God's opinion is that you and I, if we are spiritually strong, any need that we have in the physical cannot bring us down. There is nothing that we need in our lives, in the physical and in the natural, that can be able to bring us down if we are spiritually strong. Adam and Eve, they were hiding from God because they, they took their focus away from God and they focused on their natural, physical selves. It is when you remove your focus from God that you start to see all these things that you, are not, you don't have, things that you're not good at. You start to feel unworthy. You start to feel you are inadequate. You are not good enough, even if you are not good enough. In Christ Jesus, you are good enough. When God looks at you, he, he sees his own son. Colossians chapter 2 verse 6 says, when you have received Jesus Christ as your Lord and, and Savior, remain in him. Verse 7 says, be strongly rooted in him and be built in him. In Christ Jesus, you are more than enough. The Bible says, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Why? Because in Jesus Christ, we are more than enough. Whatever you can't do in the natural Lean on Christ. I, 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 I call you out to start not to look at yourself the way the enemy wants you to look at yourself. Stop looking at yourself through the opinion of the enemy. Stop looking at yourself according to the, the way he is making you see yourself naked. See yourself clothed because you are clothed in Christ. In the spirit you are clothed. You are covered in the spirit. That is why now people will, will abandon their spiritual lives to pursue their physical, natural lives. You find a person, everybody, I do believe that everyone desires a prayer life. There is no one who doesn't want to pray. Everyone wants to pray. Everyone wants to be close to God. I don't believe that there is anybody who doesn't want to be close to God. No matter who they are, saved or unsaved, somewhere within them, they want God. They need God. But they can't get to that place because the devil has set barriers through things and things that are according to his opinion. He gives you his opinion. The Bible says that God is love. And as God is love, God dispenses love. God is peace. He dispenses peace.
God is patience. He dispenses patience. What he is, he, it flows through him. Whatever you don't have, you can't give. You can only give what you have. So can you imagine every thought of hopelessness, every discouraging thought, it comes not from God, it comes from the enemy. Jesus Christ does not give us thoughts that discourages us and demotivate us. He gives us thoughts that encourages us, that uplift us, that bring us to the place where we are supposed to be. If you are feeling unworthy, reject those thoughts. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 3, we hold captive every thought that set itself above Christ Jesus. Hold those thoughts captive. Bring them down because they don't come from your Father. You are blessed. You are healed. Even if you are laying on that bed and you are not feeling well, you are not yet defeated. Do not be defeated because you are in hospital. Don't be defeated because the, the, the doctor has told you a certain report about your health. Look for the opinion of God. What is God saying about you in Christ Jesus? It's no longer about your limitedness. It's about the unlimitedness of Christ. In Christ Jesus, you are everything that God has called you to be. You might sin now. You might make a mistake now. Don't let that mistake keep you down. Rise up in Christ Jesus. Don't look at yourself through how the enemy wants you to look at yourself. Look at yourself through the way God sees you. I encourage you. God sees you through his son, Jesus Christ. And Jesus, to God, Jesus is perfect. He is the perfect image of God. He is the perfect representation of God. And he is beautiful. He is the lion of the tribe of Judah. He is the rose of Sharon. Most beautiful lily in the valley. When God looks at Jesus, he sees the one who is worthy to be given and to be trusted with everything. God gave Christ everything. The Bible says in, in John chapter 3, it says that God has given Christ everything. God has given Christ everything because God loves Christ. And in Christ Jesus, God loves you and me. The Bible says in Ephesians chapter 1 verse 4, in Christ Jesus, God has found us to be blameless. You are blameless. And Psalm 84 verse 11 says, God will not withhold anything that is good from those that walk blameless before him. If you were asking yourself if you are blameless, you are blameless. According to Ephesians 1 verse 4. You are blameless before God. In Christ Jesus, you are blameless. Rise up from being hopeless. Rise up from being defeated. You are not supposed to go through any other day defeated and conquered. If you are struggling to get out of bed, get out of that bed. Rise up from that bed. Get out of your home. Go out there. There are things that you, you can do. There are things that Christ wants to do. There are things that God wants to achieve through you in Christ Jesus. I encourage you. You are a spirit being, a beautiful spirit being that has been created by God. God loves you and he does not want you to listen to any other report. You are beautiful and you are wonderfully and fearfully made. When God looks at you, he, he looks at a, a creation that belongs to him, that is close to him, that matters to him. I encourage you, abandon those things that the enemy is telling you. Those are his thoughts. The enemy is condemned. John 16 verse 11 says, the prince of this world stands condemned. The devil is already condemned. Now he wants you to also be condemned. You cannot be condemned. You have been redeemed. You have been, you have been bought with a price. God has bought you with the price. He sent his son to die for you. And as he has died for you, rise up from the, 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 the pit. Rise up from that dirt that the enemy is trying to cover you with. You are the, the righteousness of God. You are beautiful and God loves you and God cares about you. And Christ is ready to shine forth in your life. God's life is ready to shine through you. The Bible says in John 10 verse 10, the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come to give you life, a life in abundance. The life that Jesus Christ is talking about is not your own life that the devil can steal from and destroy and kill. Jesus Christ has come to give you life 
that flows from him a life that is abundant a life that can never be touched by the enemy you are untouchable in Christ Jesus the Bible says that Jesus Christ said to his disciples in John 14 verse 30 he said to his disciples I can no longer speak much with you because the prince of peace the prince of this world is 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 on his way but he has no hold over me in Christ Jesus the devil does not have a hold over you. The devil is defeated in your life. He is conquered and he has no backbone for the claims that he makes against you. Rise up. Even if you feel that you are sinful, God sent his son while we were still yet sinners. Rise up from the lies that the devil is trying to tell you. Rise up in your dominion in Christ Jesus. Rise up and become who God says you are. You might be making mistakes. You might, be, you might have flaws, faults, but God loves you the way you are. He has chosen you and he has handpicked you from the world for his name's sake. Rise up. I, I call you out from the place where you are. If your mistakes are busy telling you and they are louder than the love of God, your mistakes, your faults are telling you that you are not good enough. If, if your flaws are telling you that God, is, God will never be able to do anything with you, rise up from that. You are covered in the blood of the, of the Lamb. You are covered in the blood of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ has paid the full price for you. In Christ Jesus, God is ready to open the heavens for you. You are the one that God has selected. Rise up from the lies that the enemy is telling you. In everything that we do, we can all profess that we are children of God. We can all tell ourselves that we are redeemed by the blood. But do you know that that truth is only, it only becomes the truth only when we are under pressure. Maybe you are under pressure because you have, you have made a mistake. Maybe you are under pressure because you can't seem to get things right. Maybe you are under pressure because the enemy is showing you the situations that are before you. Maybe he's right. Maybe everything that he's telling you, it's accurate. It's the truth. But it's not, it's not the truth according to God. It might be your current reality, but your current reality is subject to change. Rise up from where the devil is lying to you and telling you that you are not worthy, that because of your mistake you are not worthy. The Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9, the, uh, uh, Apostle Paul says, in, your, in his weakness, God says his power is perfected. Rise up. In your weakness, let God's power be perfected. God cannot abandon you. Joshua 1 verse 3, God says, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Rise up from where the enemy wants you to stay down. Rise up, defeat him, conquer him against all odds. Let the opinion of the enemy have no hold over you. Let the opinion of God about you in Christ Jesus be the one that stands. Rise up in the morning. Get up and get off the, from that bed. There are things that God wants to do with you. Don't let God ask you who told you that you are not good enough. Don't let the enemy rob you of what God wants to do with your life. You are, in God's eyes, you are his righteousness in Christ Jesus. Jesus Christ is the key. He is the one who has given us the boldness, the courage, and the confidence to become what we say we are. Rise up. Don't let what the enemy is telling you bring you down. Don't let it keep you down. Rise up. If you are called in ministry, maybe the ministry you have tried to rise up the ministry, it keeps on looking like it's not going anywhere. Keep on keeping on. Stay in the game. If you are trying something, maybe you are doing business and business seems not to be going forward. There is no progress. Don't give up. Don't let anybody lie to you and tell you that the devil can hold you down. He can fight you only for a time. Jeremiah chapter 1 verse 19 says, The enemy can fight against you, but he will never prevail against you because God is with you and is fighting for you. Rise up. 
Isaiah 59 verse 19 says, The enemy can, can come in like a flood, but the Spirit of the Lord shall raise up the standard. Rise up from where you are. Rise up and be strong in the Lord according to Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Rise up and be strong. You are the one that God has chosen. David was only a lad, but when he stood before Goliath, he became a giant, a giant even more than Goliath. With one stone, he brought down Goliath. I, I encourage you, there is nothing that is supposed to stop you and me. Absolutely nothing. No sin. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 39, nothing, nothing can separate you from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. Not sin, not mistakes, not faults. Don't let anybody lie to you. You need God and God wants you for himself and he loves you. The love of God found you and the love of God will find you again. Whether you are not prayerful, whether you don't have faith, whatever is your, the opposition against you, God is your everything. The Bible says in John 3 verse 35, the father loves the son and has placed everything in his hands. Whoever believes in his son has eternal life, but whoever rejects it, the son will not see life. For God's wrath remains on him. God loves his son. If you have received Jesus Christ, or you want to receive Jesus Christ, I tell you there is a life that is ahead of you. A life that has no limits. A life of freedom. The Bible says in Romans 8 verse 32, If he did not spare his own son, but gave him up for all of us, how can he not give us all other things? Set the limits off. Remove all the boundaries. Remove everything that you have put in your mind that the enemy is lying to you. Telling you that you can't be this, you can't achieve this. In Christ Jesus, you can achieve anything. In Christ Jesus, you are loved by God. Do not allow the enemy to lie to you that because of this, because of your flaws, because of your mistakes, because of what you have done, because of what you have not done. God picked us up when we, have not, we had not done anything. The Bible says... He gave us his son while we were still yet sinners. Wherever you are, I encourage you, become what God wants you to be. Draw close to God, have a relationship with God, become intimate with God, seek God, pursue God. Jeremiah 29 verse 18 says, if you seek me with all of your heart, I will let myself be found by you. I encourage you right now, whatever it is that has been discouraging you, that has been making you to not pursue God, because maybe it's mistakes, it's your flaws, it's the decisions, the wrong decisions and choices that you have made. Right now, I encourage you, the Lord is your anchor. He is the one who gives you the right to stand and pursue God. Don't let anything stop you from pursuing God. God's love is available for you. God's love is on the table. The devil is a liar. He cannot rob you of the love of God. Nothing can separate you from the love of God. No mistake, no flaws, nothing. Come back to God and let God clothe you with his love. Let God bless you. Let God prosper you. Let God succeed you. Whether you are saved or unsaved, whether you, you are righteous or unrighteous, holy and holy or unholy, come back to God. God wants you. As Adam and Eve was, were trying to run away from God in the Garden of Eden, God already knew what they had, already, they, they had done. He already knew, but he was looking for them. God knows what you have done. Don't run from him. And don't let any human being make you run away from God. Whatever you have become, whatever lifestyle you have chosen, God can still walk with you. Repent and come back to him. Even if you have repented many times, come back. Keep on coming back until what God is doing within you is done. You drink or you smoke Whatever it is that is holding you back, it, it has no power to hold you back. It has no authority to hold you back. God loved you and God loves you. Up to now, God's love is still available in Christ Jesus. Come to God and let God have an intimate relationship with you.
a, a, a relationship of love, of affection that is deep, very personal and very close. This relationship is between you and God. It has nothing to do with what somebody else says. Let God be the one to dismiss you. Let God be the one to tell you that you're not good enough. If God does not tell you you're not good enough, you remain good enough in God because Christ Jesus is the key. Jesus Christ has given you the right for God to look at you and see the one that he loves. God is in love with you. He fell in love with you in Christ Jesus. He still falls in love with you in Christ Jesus. And he will continue to fall in love with you in Christ Jesus. I encourage you, let God be the only person that you draw close to. If you have been looking for business cards for people, many people look for, for business cards. They want to connect with people. I encourage you, let the one business card that is in your heart be God's business card. If you want to rededicate your life to Christ because you realize that God loves you in spite of everything, the cross says in spite of anything, the cross says regardless of what you have done, the cross says no matter what you have done or what you have not done, I encourage you, rededicate your life to Jesus. If you have not accepted Christ into your life, that one thing you've been looking for, that you've been looking for and searching for it in every other place and you did not find it, is God himself in Christ Jesus. I encourage you to accept Jesus Christ into, into your life. If you want to, encourage, to, to receive Jesus Christ, I encourage you to close your eyes right now and I'm going to release a prayer upon your life. And if you want to rededicate your life to Jesus Christ, I encourage you to open your heart right now. And let this prayer touch your heart and reunite you and reconcile you with your Father who has no boundaries, no limitations, no blockages. Nothing will stop him to come after you. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray for the person that is listening, that is watching right now. May you touch their lives. Father God, that heavenly Father, as they have made a decision that they want to come back to you, they want to rededicate their lives, they want to give you their lives. Father, I pray for them. May you bless them that mighty God, your touch may come upon them. Release them from the lies that the enemy has told them. Release them, Father God, from the opinion that is from the pit of hell. Release them, Father God, so that they may find freedom. As the Bible says in John 8 verse 36, when the Son of Man sets you free, you are free indeed. Father, I pray upon them right now in the mighty name of Jesus that God Almighty, as they come to you, may they experience an encounter that your love is unconditional and it is more than enough and that they are worthy of your love in Christ Jesus. In Jesus' precious mighty name, Father God, we pray. And thank you for listening and answering this prayer. Amen.